What is going on? You're here with Nate and this is Cross Beats Production. So I wanted to do my wish list for Studio One, more or less the plugins, updates I'd like to see. Um, I think it's good to get this type of uh, content out there because I know that Presonus listen to their customers for the most part. Um, and I really think that they pay attention to what the, I guess, the main paying customer wants in the DAW that they're creating. I feel like the most recent update, let's just talk about that for now for a second as well. So Studio One just most recently updated a few things inside of Studio One. And within that update, they updated the pipeline to Pipeline XT. Massive fan of that because I use my um, Antelope audio device as an external hardware device with plugins, uh, etc. I'll just quickly show you what I'm talking about if you don't know. So inside of my Antelope audio device, I can actually use these plugins by routing outside of Studio One into my Antelope audio device and then back into Studio One using Pipeline. Um, I'm currently not doing that right now because I'm using the, just the, the actual hardware itself, but Using Pipeline, this can be used for external bus compressors, ex well, not bus compressors, just external compressors, 500 series, EQs, all sorts of stuff, external hardware-wise, tape machines, whatever you have uh, available to you as far as external hardware. And this all is routed using Pipeline. You can do it other ways other than using Pipeline, but Pipeline is a really good way of routing things quite quickly if you want to use it as an insert inside of Studio One. So... Um, if you're not familiar with that, have a look at it, play around with it, figure out how it all works. But um, basically, it, it just allows you to route stuff. So you're having all your outputs and then your inputs on this side. So you're inputting the audio. And then obviously, you can decide, you know, by hitting auto, this is what's really cool about it. You can actually hit automatic and it adjusts the, the ping. So it pings the device and then tells you how long the delay was and it calculates it and automatically. Um, my biggest gripe though with Studio One, and I've had subscribers and comments on my channel from day dot, and I even made a video about the blacklisting plugins thing. Some of the plugins, I think, I don't know what it is about the DAW, but for whatever reason, some of the plugins inside of Studio One, they crash. I can probably name a few plugins that cause the DAW to crash um, on a regular basis. For example, some of the UAD stuff, um, not to name a few, Alpha Master Compressor, that actually makes this door crash. Every single time I use it, I'm guaranteed to have a crash in about five minutes after I insert that plugin be it AU version, VST, whatever, it doesn't matter. It makes the door crash. So some of the stability stuff, they need to address that. I really think even with VSTs themselves, some of the VSTs, like even I, I'm sure I've heard other guys on YouTube saying, please don't crash, please don't crash. And it's like, it's like you're expecting it to happen because you know it's going to happen. Like, it's not like it doesn't happen with other DAWs. It does. I'm not saying that Studio One is the only culprit in this instance, but I know for sure with Logic, when I use Logic, I'm pretty safe. Like most of the time, I don't think I've had a crash in Logic for I don't know how long. And I guess it's just because it's a Mac. They make it for Mac. They know what they're doing. They're allowing obviously all the engineers to work behind the scenes, whereas maybe PreSonus doesn't have all the direct connections to all the stuff that's behind the scenes with the computing, you know, all the coding and all that stuff. So it's not against pretty pretty soundness in that regard. Um, it's, it's just something I think they need to address. And I think a lot of people talk about it inside of their, their forums. So anyway, so pipeline has been updated recently and that's something that I'm really happy to see because I, I just think the old interface is getting old. Uh, the next things I would like to see, and the reason why I've got these plugins on the screen here, these are the three main plugins I think I use the most for mixing, mastering, all sorts of stuff inside of Studio One. And I feel like these need a refresh. I've seen this EQ for probably the last two and a half years, and it's kind of getting a bit old as far as, you know, what it looks like. It works well, um, but I think they could definitely do some things with the EQ. For example, I'll just get rid of the the pipeline there so with the eq i really think this eq could be used um, they could do a couple of things they could make a linear phase eq um, and also just this eq so you've got two different eqs to work with that's one thing they could do secondly they could obviously add in the mid side processing inside of the eq rather than you having to go into this thing here and then creating a split dropping it down all that sort of stuff that you have to do right now 
I think it would just be a lot um, simpler. Like, you know, inside of Logic, I'm sure a other DAWs have it as well, but inside of Logic, you've got an EQ, you've got the linear phase EQ, and then the standard EQ. And inside of the EQ, you can actually adjust mid-side processing and the sides and left and right. And it just makes things a lot easier as far as a mix engineer to go in there, adjust, you know, if you want to put in just your sides and you want to dip out some of that at the 100K, uh, sorry, 100 hertz, you can. So it allows you to do that a lot quicker um, and more efficiently. And I just think it would speed up the mixing process for a lot of people who use Studio One. Leave your comments below if you think that's correct, because that's the way I feel about it. Some of you guys that use it would probably know as well. If you're using the EQ, how would you feel about having mid-side EQ inside of the DAW? Um, I think it would be beneficial for sure. So anyway, that's the EQ that definitely needs to be up, updated or refreshed to XT if that's what they're going to do. Um, and please add in the mid-side stuff in there as well. Um, the compressor itself, I'm a massive fan of this compressor. I think from day dot, this compressor is is probably some one of the best compressors I've used in a DAW. Just give me a sec. Cheers. Um, I think this compressor really, it sounds great. It has a lot of functionality. Even the fact that it's got this filter, you can use that filter to bypass the low end frequencies or likewise with the top. You can use this uh, as an, uh, you know, a de de-esser if you wanted to. You can do a lot of stuff with this compressor. It has a lot of features that other, I guess, DAWs may or may not have, but it definitely allows you to do a lot. It's got the look ahead function, stereo link, um, your ratios, all that good stuff that's on a normal compressor. And then the auto adaptive and auto there so you can change the way the attack and release settings work. Um, updating the interface though, I think needs um, just to look at on this one because two things with this, it just needs to be a little bit bigger or if it's not bigger, it needs to be adjustable so that you can actually adjust it to whatever screen size you have. If you're using a, you know, iMac, which is what I've got, you can actually use it on the full screen or half the screen or whatever you want to do. I think that would be a fantastic feature to have that to be adjustable, just to have the GUI as, as an adjustable interface um, and refresh it, just make it a little, a little bit nicer looking. Hopefully for Christmas, please just make that happen. <laughs> anyway, I'm only asking because I think you guys at PreSonus are awesome. So, you know, please look at that as the next uh, possible update. Um, finally on the limiter, again, the same kind of thing. I'm a massive fan of the limiter. I like the fact that you've got the soft clipping function as well as the, um, the normal limiting mode there. So you've got this setting here, which allows you true peak limiting, which it says right there. Um, then you've got, if you turn that off, you've got the soft clip function there. So that toggles that and you can just change it to uh, be a different style there. So it is just quite a good limiter um, that you can obviously use if you don't have any other third-party VSTs. This limiter works very well. Um, it sounds quite good for a limiter as a stock VST. You have the adjustable threshold input and ceiling and release. Um, you can do the metering a bit differently as well if you want to have different metering. So that's kind of awesome as well. And obviously the gain reduction dial here. So all of that, again, I think that could just do with a refresh and have the interface a bit larger, um, more clear, just more looking like, I'm a massive fan of this Pipeline XT. I'll just bring it back here. It's on this thing. So something like this. I just think the metering is sick on this. Like it looks really good. Um, so maybe just refresh it, give it something, a new tasty look that it, it you know, could obviously do with. And uh, from there, that would be awesome. So the next thing then, I guess, from there would be probably the reverb plugins, which uh, right now from uh, what I've got here, they've got this reverb, which is the room reverb. It's a nice sounding reverb. Again, they could probably just refresh it. I don't know if I'm asking too much in this, this video, but I figured just don't shoot. <laughs> um, I figured it's worth asking for all this stuff because I haven't done a video where I've just said my wish list of, you know, maybe the top 10 plugins to update um, in that side of things. But um, some of that, I'm just I'm just a fan of the, the reverb that I've got in there. It just really needs to be refreshed. Um, I, I think this plugin is one of the better ones for metering um, inside of Studio One. It, it does really good just for getting your, you know, your peak limits, your peak metering, I should say. And you can change the, the way it reacts to the signal as well. And it does have a correlation here as well. So anyway, so hopefully you guys can make your own comments below about what you think should be refreshed or updated or what we should see in the next uh, update because 
the more you guys make comments, the more that presenters will pay attention to you down there in making those comments. And obviously myself making this video, reaching out to presenters and hoping that they listen um, and get some stuff updated for what we'd like to see. So if you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys so much and peace out.